Reef Dudes is sponsored by Ecotech Marine and Bulk Reef Supply. Today we're checking out the new and improved reef bot. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Dudes. So today we are looking at the new and improved reef bot. Now this is actually my old reef bot, but we're going to do some upgrades on it. Um, a few months back, I was chatting with the fine folks at Reef Kinetics and they informed me that they had a bunch of kind of upgrades coming. Now if you buy one today, these are already going to be on there. They're already going to have these upgrades. Um, they were kind enough to send me the parts so I could upgrade mine to make it up to date kind of with the current ones. Now, if you already have one, they did say this is something that will be available to kind of purchase if you want to do this upgrade yourself. Again, don't have to do it, but if you want to upgrade those extra little features, then it's a nice kind of solution to do it. Now, over the years, it's been about a year and a half now that I've been running this and it has worked very well for me. Uh, the only issue I had is I did have a leak at one point in the reaction chamber and it was just due to the tubing starting to corrode a little bit on it just from the corrosiveness of the reagents. So uh, there's about five mil or so of it that had a little bit of a split so I just cut off the tube, reattached it, back in business. So overall it was fairly minor and easy to fix and get back in business. So today we're going to be performing some of these upgrades. Now, the one thing that does make me happy, I do like to see when companies constantly improve their products. This guy, you know, they've added other features where like it will stir your reagents more frequently and certain things just to keep them fresher and from going stale. Now with some of these upgrades, I know they did ch replace the reaction chamber and I believe the pump head motor they replaced it with a stronger one. Um, so it will stir, it will mix and it will test faster, which is pretty awesome. And I'm also gonna do a few different maintenance things on this just for good measure, like some of the pump heads and whatnot, just to kind of keep things fresh. Now, as for the goodies, we got some new tubing, we got some new pump heads, a power cable extension. Thank you for that. That's something I've been wanting for a while now. Uh, we got some other maintenance parts. I'm guessing this fancy bag is probably gonna be the new reaction chamber. So we do have the new and improved reaction chamber. Um, this one's fully sealed on the bottom. The other one, you can see the bottom of it. So. Definitely a little bit of change on that one. Uh, it should be a fairly easy install. And got our wire come up to the top. Power cable extension. This is one thing that I've loosely complained about in the past, just because it has a very short cable on the meanwhile power supply. Um, so having an extension so it's not dangling. In my opinion, it's, it's a good way to go. Replacement tubing. So I'm going to replace the ones going down to the reaction chamber, all the internal ones. And this looks like the newer stir head. Um, they did say there was stronger, bigger magnets in the stir bar, so that should be what this guy has to pop it on top. Now, all the circuitry is on top, so I am going to take the top off just to get access to everything. Now, in case you haven't noticed, there's a lot of screws. Um, for this, I'm going to grab my little electronic screwdriver. Again, not required, but definitely nice to have. If you do a lot with electronics, I would definitely recommend picking one up just because it makes your life easier. Now, it's not the toughest thing in the world. You know, if it's too tough, you might need a little bit of manual spinning, but once you crack it loose, then this guy can do the rest of the work for you. Now, because we got to take off those little nuts around the side, we're going to pop off the LED strip first, just so we get a little more access. Fix your LED strips, and it'll be nice and easy to grab the little nuts on the inside now. And with the last screw, we can see the guts of it all. Got our power supply, our network adapter, all our different pump heads, got our connectors on the back. Kind of looks like there might almost be some more boards underneath. It's actually pretty impressive. It can run all off. It almost looks like a Pi Zero, but it's pretty impressive how much stuff can actually run off of it. Now I think I'm going to tackle the hardest part first, which is going to be the reaction chamber. Um, everything else should be pretty easy after this. And to get this guy out, it looks like we just have the two screws on that collar on top and we should be able to pop it out. Then the trickier bit will just be fishing all the, the tubes and the wires and getting that up top. And I really appreciate that it's basically the same screws throughout the entire machine because it makes life much, much easier. So it looks like we have a little ring on the top and the reaction chamber just slides down from underneath. I'll give it a quick little wipe down. Now I'm going to guess most people probably aren't going to be as hardcore and take apart their machine and do this upgrade. But if you're going to, then I got you. Um, hopefully this video will show you exactly what you need to do. Now anyone that's buying it new will already have all these upgraded parts in their new machine. So not a worry for you guys. You guys are already set and good to go. But that being said, I kind of do enjoy these deep dives because it really allows me to learn the machine and figure out exactly how it works and, you know, 
if there's any other random issues, then I'll have a pretty dang good understanding of it. So again, not for everybody, but I kind of enjoy these deep dives. It looks like a lot of the connectors and stuff are under this guy. And there's one more panel here, and then we should be able to see into the, the heart of the beast. So a lot of these screws have little nuts on the bottom, so you almost got to kind of pinch it with your fingers as you unscrew it, just to pop it off. I'm not going to lie, I'm a little bit curious to see what's inside. There we go. So we have the bottom of our motors, and we got our circuit board and our circuitry inside. Huh, I always wondered what was in the middle of this tower. Okay, so this guy... Uh, we need to take off. It's gonna be this lovely wire coming down here, and it looks like it's this big one on the left. So that's the guy we're gonna swap out and replace. Now some of you may be wondering, why go through all this effort? Why upgrade the testing chamber? Well, the new one provides more accuracy and precision, which is always a welcome upgrade. And there also, I believe it also speeds up the testing a little bit, which is again, Always a big plus in my mind. Now again, it does make me happy to see them doing these improvements over time. Now I know the original reef bot that I had, over time the actuator did die on me and I had to replace it. Where this one, they went for a stepper motor and a lead screw, which is something that's used in 3D printers and gets constant abuse and keeps on trucking. So I think that was a really wise move. And even now, you know, seeing them upgrade some of these parts, like um, the colorometer over time, you know, just improving it, constant improvement, which is awesome to see on any product. Now I did just put a little T and B on this for top and bottom, just to make my life easier. So I'm gonna pop these out. We do have our little magnetic pill inside of that, so make sure you don't lose that guy. I'm gonna set that aside. There we go. Tight fit, but got it out. Yeah, I'm just gonna route this back underneath these wires. This is where the old one was. And plug it back into the board. Now I do recall the screws were facing towards the center of the board. And I'll put our cable wrap on there just to clean things back up. Like that, make sure we plug it. Make sure we plug our ethernet cable back in for good measure. Fish out the screw you dropped in. Now we can pop our pump head assembly back on. Now, before I put these back on, I am going to replace a couple of these tubes for good measure. I don't know if the length has to be exact, but I'm going to do so just to, just to be safe. And if you're placing tubes anyways, it's a nice easy way to just line it up and match it up. Now this step probably isn't required, but it's good measure. When I reattach these, I usually just kind of put a little bit of saliva on it and then push the tube on from there. I find that works pretty well. And we got our top and bottom back on, pretty much good to go. So we can screw our reaction chamber back in. And I did receive a new one in this kit with new screws. So we're definitely going to use it and a new O-ring. So that really wasn't that hard to do. It took a little bit of time just to half just getting through all these screws, but the actual routing and the wires and swapping the part was relatively easy. Oh, nice and snugged up. I'm gonna put these little wire retainers back in. And the main part of our upgrade is complete. The other next little bit we're gonna do is replace this stir bar head. I'll see if I can pop that off. Um, it does look like there is bigger circles, so likely larger magnets inside. And if you look at the size of it, it is taller. So that would be putting the magnets closer to the vials, which probably increases the, the torque and capacity that it has. This side I can see. That was a super easy install. Do not forget to replace the tiny little pill inside the reaction chamber. Very important. Because you will not get proper test readings without that. Now that basically completes the main parts of our upgrade. Uh, we upgraded the stir bar motor, so it's gonna spin a bit faster. It's gonna be a bit torquier, a little closer to all the vials. Um, they've also added some kind of software upgrades that are gonna stir, periodically stir the nitrate and the phosphate region to kind of keep those working better. 
Um, this file has the new colorometer inside of it. Um, so it's supposed to increase the precision and accuracy of it, which is always a big plus. So yeah, pretty, pretty slick little upgrade. Was relatively easy to do. It probably spent me, you know, 20, 30 minutes doing this. Half of that's probably because I'm filming and half of that time is just taking out screws. The rest of it wasn't really bad at all. Now, because I have this part anyways, though, I am going to replace a few more tubings. Um, so next I'm just going to swap the one on this, the rinsing chamber. I'll swap those out because they're nice and easy. And yeah, I think after that, I'll put it back together and we should be back in business. One nice thing with this open frame, it's actually really easy to get tools inside and work on it, which I appreciate. Um, I'm mainly just taking this one off just so it's easier to get to all the tubing. And I'll honestly, this one's mainly for rinsing, so it probably doesn't need it, but we got it apart, so what the heck. So, T, B. And since we're maintenance mode, if I look inside, there's a little bit of coloration, a few things. So I'm just going to give this a quick rinse with the RDI and wipe it out with a paper towel. Much better. Makes it pretty easy that they have the same size tubing for basically everything. Now, of course, the only thing really left is to put all your screws and all your parts back together. Um, this is a little bit of the, the bonus content, but I think I'm just going to replace that couple little bits of tubing that's discolored. You know, sometimes some machines are calibrated based on the length of the tubing. So just a little bit of preventative if you keep it basically the same thing. If it's a smidge off, it probably doesn't matter. And looking at this, this is the waistline. So again, this one doesn't really matter on that front. But the tank water and the RODI lines, those ones I would for sure make sure you keep them to the, the proper length. Now, if you ever buy a auto tester used, this would be kind of a good practice as a bit of a maintenance thing, just to refresh it on your own. Um, or if you have them for a couple of years, same thing, just replacing this tubing and just kind of giving a bit of overhaul is just good preventative. It prevents leaks or other stuff from the tubing breaking down over time. Now this one's kind of the bonus rounds of tips. If you wanted to turn off the LED strip on it, most of the time I like it, but there's definitely times where it's a little bit bright in the office and I'd like to be able to turn it off. Um, we, we can cut this red wire and put a switch in the middle and that will basically give us our on and off of the LEDs. And it is pretty much good as new. We replaced the colorometer, we replaced the magnetic stir head, the tubing in it, uh, the syringes and the needles, so everything's basically new. The only other last pro tip is use a bit of super lube. And this is something that I've used on my 3D printers on all the lead screws and it works very, very well. So I'll pull it on your finger and it's going to put on the rails and the screws and it will just make sure everything's lubricated so it slides nicely and stays nice and quiet. And the fun part, reinserting all of our screws. All right, guys, she is back together, We're victorious. We got everything assembled. Really, it wasn't even that hard. If you're not a technical person, I have faith in you. You can still do it, especially watching my little video guide. I honestly just figured it out as I went. So it was fairly self-explanatory. Um, at the end of the day, you know, we got the new colorometer installed and the new magnetic stir head. And that was kind of the main parts of the upgrade. Uh, they've also done software upgrades to add in more reagents and to have it stir a little more frequently just to keep kind of like the nitrates and the phosphate reagents. Those ones a little more mixed up, which improves the accuracy overall. Again, the new colorometer again, is going to help with the accuracy and the precision of it. Um, so there's been a few nice improvements. So again, you don't need the upgrades. If you're buying a new one, you're going to get them anyways. If you do have an older one, you do want to upgrade it. It's pretty cool that they're offering the, like an upgrade path as well to upgrade those parts. Now, while I was at it, again, I did replace the needles. I replaced some extra tubing just for kind of good measure since I had it apart anyways. And now the whole process wasn't bad. The hardest part was really just taking out and putting all the bazillion screws back. Um, primarily because I had to hold the nut on both sides, so it made it a little harder to, couldn't really do it one-handed, so kind of two hands. Aside from that, it really wasn't bad at all. Now, this has been probably 15, 15 months now, 18 months. It's been a while since I've had this and it's held up well. There's been no real issues. Uh, the only, only issue I had, I don't remember which connector, if it was a colorometer or this one, but one of the tubes had a little bit of a crack in it. So I had a little miniature leak. I just trimmed the tube a little bit and pushed it back on and I was back in business. Um, so that was probably, you know, a year and a 
bit in. Now these reagents are not the nicest to this tubing. They do break it down. So half a wire replace them is just preventative. So I won't have to worry about that again for another couple of years. But yeah, overall pretty cool device. If you do want to pick up a ReefBot, uh, I believe my code ReefDude still works and gives you guys a discount. So a little bit of a bonus. Shout out to ReefConnects for hooking me up with the upgrade part so I could make mine into kind of the newer version of it, more or less. And yeah, so as always guys, if you enjoyed this, be sure to hit that like button. If you do, make sure you subscribe. If you want to pick one up, be sure to use code ReefDudes on the ReefConnects website. All right guys, I'll catch you guys on the next video.